All right, court is calling state of Texas versus Jacqueline C. Sanchez. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Daniel Escobar for the state of Texas. Defense? Karen Corey for Jacqueline Sanchez, defendant, Your Honor. Are you Ms. Sanchez? Yes, ma'am. Are you the same Jacqueline C. Sanchez who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2021 for the offense of possession of a controlled substance for a period of three years? Is that you? Can I have parties yes, announced for the record for the state? Tom Nisbet. For the defense? Charles Gold, Your Honor. And are you Ms. Sanchez? Yes. Next, I'm showing you what's an app title application for deferred adjudication or community supervision. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you electronically yes. sign it? Yes, ma'am. State, you're, it is true. You're proceeding on count two only, waiving count one. Any objection? No. No. Mr. All right. Mr. S Ms. Sanchez, I'm gonna, it's Friday. Ms. Sanchez, I'm going to show you what's entitled. Court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you electronically sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand in count two, your charge of possession of a controlled substance, penalty group one, four grams to 200 grams. That's a second degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand if the court were to grant your application for deferred adjudication, if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could fine you guilty and sentence you up to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea bargain agreement, the state is proceeding on count two. They're asking for a $1,000 fine. They're recommending deferred adjudication. There's to be restitution of $57 to San Antonio Police Department for laboratory testing. Did you understand that to be the plea bargain agreement? Yes, ma'am. Then to the offense is charged in count two. How do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments, and the court will review the same. All right, just one second. There's yes, an issue I need to address. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Harner, can you unmute? Yes, Your Honor. Why are you not able to follow rules? Did I not say that inmates were not allowed to use the chat box? And you're trying to use a chat box to influence the court to make some decision on your case. That is inappropriate. I apologize, Your Honor. I, I, no, I no, no, no. I tell people over and over again, do not, do not violate rules and then ask, for forgiveness instead of permission. You knew and you knew what you were doing and you're trying to influence the court instead of going through proper channels, which is through your attorney. And what I can tell you, I haven't read what you've sent. Yes, ma'am. Because I just saw that you sent it and you know inmates are not allowed to use the chat box. Do you want to go back to your cell and we can see you in maybe 60 to 90 days? No, Your Honor, it won't happen again. No, Your Honor, it won't happen again. All right. The court has accepted in the evidence states exhibits one and attachments and the court is reviewing the same. And the court will find that, that there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty. However, the court will defer finding of guilt as you've applied for deferred adjudication. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Judge, uh... Ms. Sanchez has been here. We looked at all the, the evidence. We discussed some of the motions to suppress that uh, she accepted it. She's taking responsibility. We just ask that you follow the plea agreement, Judge. All right. Uh, Ms. Sanchez, are you employed? Not yet, ma'am. How are you supporting yourself? Um, I, I just recently... Um, I lost my apartment, so right now um, I am staying with a friend. Um, Who's this friend? My my friend Vivian. All right. If you're drug tested today, what are the results going to be? And before you answer, know that I am going to drug test you today. So, what are the results going to be? Um, I I, I will. I'm be honest. I will be dirty from marijuana, ma'am. And what else? It's and more than it. marijuana. No, no, I know, but that's it, ma'am. When's the last, well, let's do it this way. What 
could you possibly be positive for if you're drug tested today and you will be drug tested today? I know marijuana for sure. And what else? That's a maybe. Um, maybe, but I have not done that, that ma'am. Like we spent about, about five days, six days that I have done that. I'm letting that go. I just want to start working, get my life together and finish my probation successfully. Do you have any children? Um, I do. What are their ages? 24, 25, 24, 25, my daughter's 25, yeah, she's just turned 25, um, 19, 18, and my daughter's going to be 17 next month, my youngest. All right, and where, where is your 17-year-old? Right now, she's, uh, she should be at work, she's working. Well, where does she live? Um, she stays with, she lives with her boyfriend right now. Because we had got evicted of our apartment. So um, she's, she's staying there right now. And I'm right here. I'm just trying to like, go. I'm trying to go back to work. But my car right now, uh, the car belt went out. So I mean, I already did my application. I just need to pick up my client. Um, I was going to be a, I'm a care provider. No, that's and, you're not going to be a care provider anymore. <laughs> Do you understand why? Because of my case. Well, because you're active, active in your addiction. And I can't have someone who's active in their addiction, who has felony cases, being a provider for vulnerable people in our society. When would I be going over to, to approve that? Uh, let, me, oh, let me ask you this, Ms. Sanchez. If you had a grandmother who needed someone to care for them, and if it were going to be me, and I told you I had a meth problem and a marijuana problem, and I'm probably going to test positive for marijuana and maybe meth, would you want me looking after your, your grandmother? No, ma'am. I, I, I completely understand. That's what I'm saying. If I'm, my UAs are, are good, like, on, or like successfully, um, can I go back to that? No, no. Because let me just explain this to you. Would you want me, if I'm a, maybe going to test positive for meth or marijuana to be in a home with your grandmother who may have valuable items and you know what happens when you don't have employment, right? You have an addiction and there are valuable items around. <sighs> So this is what the court is going to do. Three years to court adjudication, $1,000 fine probated, $57 for laboratory testing, 80 hours of community service restitution. 40 of those hours will be waived if you provide proof of your COVID vaccination. The court is not requiring that, but if you do, 40 hours will be deducted. There's to be no unsupervised contact with minors, a referral to felony drug court. If she's not accepted into felony drug court, then right, it's going state. to be intensive. Uh, violated condition number two, on or about the 12th day of February 2024 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Jacqueline C. Sanchez, did then and there fail to submit to drug testing as directed by the court, court officer, supervision officer, and or duly authorized agent of the court in violation of condition number two. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True, man. Uh, Your Honor, same way as all the violations. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number two, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, sentence you up to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number two? All right, you're whispering. Yes, ma'am. All right. Court will find violation of condition number two true. Is there a proposed agreement? Uh, yes, Your Honor, it's for two years TDC. That is our proposed agreement, Your Honor. All right, why should I give her the minimum? What has she done on probation? Judge, I can tell you that she did complete drug court. Unfortunately, she kind of fell short in reentry court. Um, she had tons and tons of negative UAs. She had been working really, really hard. Um, I believe that the underlying offense was seven grams. So I know it's four to 200, but it was closer to the four than it was a 200. And um, so she does have I think 139 days in jail. 
Um, she just really just wants to put this behind her and move on with her life. She tells me she's been working for two years at the uh, Tower of Americas. She's hoping they'll keep her job open for her, depending upon how, if you follow the recommendation, how long it takes for her to parole. She's got a house that she she bought. Her kids are living it. They've been paying the rent. She's hoping that will sustain itself while she's gone. But just, she just wants to put this behind her and move on. But she did do a significant amount of work on this probation. All right. Do you want to raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony here will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So hope you got. Yes. All right. You can lower your hand. State your name for the record. Jacqueline C. Sanchez. All right. Why didn't you do well in drug court? I'm sorry. What was that again? Why did you not do well in felony drug court? I just I didn't have the money to pay for the UAs, ma'am. No. Uh Felony drug court usually will not remove you from your pro their program because you can't pay UAs. Are you telling the court that you were removed from felony drug court because you couldn't pay for the UA? And I had a relapse. I had drank four beers. Man. Did she? She actually graduated from drug court, I believe, mm -hmm. and then she went to the reentry. So I think she she completed drug court. So I don't think she had a problem doing drug court. I think it's when she got out. So here's my question: Why did they remove you from their reentry program? Because I drink four beers on the 23rd. No, usually it's more than that because felony drug court usually understands relapses. Am I wrong in that? Do they, they not understand that you had a relapse? They usually do, ma'am, but this time they felt like I played them. Oh, what do you mean by they felt like you played them? They felt like I, I was lying, I lied to them. Okay. All right. Probation. Judge, the note that was received from drug court was well, just one second. Any objections to probation giving me some insight in whether or not I should follow this agreement? Okay. And also, um, they found on my phone that I was trying to get, um, I was trying to get um, methadone for a friend because he. He was rel he relapsed and he he was trying to get clean, and that's what I was doing. And I had somebody else ask me, to, to, I was looking for marijuana for somebody. Wait a minute, what? I was looking for marijuana for somebody. They asked me to look for it. They uh, uh, text me if I could find it, and I tell them yeah. But I never got to doing that. Oh, so now we're getting to the point. So you were in felony drug court in the reentry program, and you were looking for drugs for other people. Because I think she's like for methadone and possibly marijuana. I, I, she's not, you know, the perfect probationer, but that that's that's what she told me, Judge. I don't think it was. In I made a mistake, Judge. I'm sorry. Nope, you made choices. They're not mistakes. They're choices. All right. Is there anything else, Judge? Again, we just ask that you consider the fact that she did spend a lot of time in drug court. Um, she has been straightforward with you, I believe. Um, and ask you to follow the state's recommendation of two years TDC. All right. And do you want me to hear from probation or no, counsel? Sure. No. I don't think my client's trying to hide anything, Judge. Okay. Uh, probation? The information that was received from the felony drug court was um, she did finish the program successfully. However, during the aftercare portion, <clears throat> Um, there were UA tests with positive ECG results, and a phone search was conducted and text messages revealed that he was communicating with negative contacts and negotiating the sale of illegal drugs. Okay. I did reach out to felony drug court to see if they would be willing to accept for that, and it was was there not. All right, so this is what the court is going to do. As previously stated, the court is finding violation of condition uh, number six true. So I think it's in I'm sorry, number two true. Yes. Thank you. Violation of condition number two, the court is finding that to be true. Uh, there's a thousand dollar fine. Time and money were run concurrent. Was the $57 ever paid for the laboratory testing? Do you know if you ever paid that? I, uh, drug court? Was it ah. drug court? Okay. okay. No, I have not paid that. Okay. 
There should be $57 restitution to SAPD for laboratory testing. If you would like, I could have you refer to the therapeutic community. It doesn't increase your time at the prison. It's just something to hopefully help you maintain your sobriety. Okay, I'll take that. All right, therapeutic community. Court's gonna sentence you to six years in prison and give you credit for any time served. Gonna show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Right. Did you re did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? I'm just sending it to me right now. Okay. Thanks. All right. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. All right. Uh, because this is not, I did not follow your proposed agreement with regards to sentencing. You do have a limited right to appeal. That right to appeal is as it relates to the allegations in the motion, not the fact that you are on deferred adjudication. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes. All right, we can go off the record. Good luck to you. Um, even though you're going to the prison, if you get out of prison and you need help, and you feel as though that's not being addressed, so you don't know who to contact, felony drug court is always available, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, good luck to you.